or something all of the official countries are doing it wrong <laughs> oh wow the alerts went out already nice well you guys see what what we got going on um what does monokai call this kaban is that what it's called let me look that up real quick monokai what is this carrying case called? I need to know. Oh my god. Thank you, babe, for the three month resub. Um, though technically four in a row because you were gifted a sub for your first month. So it counts, baby. Four months. And yeah, the Monokai Kaban here in the white I don't know what you would call this. Outer wrapping. Here we get to see the Kaban matches the keyboard itself with the olive coloring. And let's get right into this. Oh, yes. If anyone was wondering, I guess my wonderful girlfriend and mod can answer in chat exactly what you need to know. If you're wondering about tonight's build, there it is in chat. For the one time, Monokai Hero. This is an olive. It will be built with Novel Keys and K Cream launch editions. All right, got those. We got TX stabs. I'm not sure if this is 1.2 or 1.6, but I got a set of each. And then we have the Monokai White on Black Series 1, which I will grab the box for later. This one's kind of last minute, but nice to do. Late night stream, something a little bit calmer than anything that goes on in the, earlier in the day. Not too many people awake, so it's nice to be around. Um, hopefully none of that information got leaked. I'll be bad. Did you guys see anything just now? I hope not. Well, you guys let me know. Did you just see anything? I'll have to double check the VOD after. But let's hope that nothing got through. Any information? Or was it blurry? You weren't paying attention? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> trying to see if uh, my girlfriend noticed if there's any information leaking, but it's cool. It's cool. We have all our accessories that we'll put to the side. I know where you live now, as you should, as you should. I'll double check the VOD after. Hopefully, I don't have to delete it or I'll just blur it. But hopefully, none of you guys are hunting down whose address that was anytime soon. That'd be bad. Let's show off the keyboard. See, can I focus this properly? There we go. There it is. The Olive Final Cut Hero. See how it looks in the overhead, maybe. Oh, it is very dim in here, huh? I'm not sure how I feel about this being so dark. Oh, actually, are my color settings correct on my monitor? Question. They're not entirely. Okay. It's still dark, but not as dark as I thought it was. Whoopsie. Sorry, guys. I have a uh, dimming feature at a certain time point in the night, but... I wish it was more forest than lime green. Yeah, I could see that. The olive is definitely lending more towards uh, a closer to the lime family of green than it is anything like a deep forest, like you kind of would expect with an olive. Let's put this back in here for the time being. And let's discuss accessories. To start, you've got your uh, JST daughter board along with cable and mounting screws, mounting hardware. We've got our pour-on gaskets. This is a gasket mount 65%, courtesy of the amazing designers over at Monokai. Monokai sticker, for anyone who's into that. There's, I've said this before and I'll say it again, it reminds me of the Water Tribe. Wiping cloth, Monokai branded. This will be good for the uh, special edition. I have to build one of those very, very soon. You guys will see that very soon on the channel. And then another card, similar to the Tomo. We get this nice embossed card, Monokai and Friends. I'm not sure of the other studio that had their hand in this, uh, so I apologize to that individual or entity. Um, 
Designed in Singapore and in Malaysia. It doesn't actually state anybody else on here. It just has the model kind logo. So I'm wondering... Oops. Sorry, microphone. So I'm wondering who contributed and what did they contribute. On the upper section of the carrying case here, we have our PCB. If my camera would focus. Focus? There we go. So you guys might have been able to see. I'll pull it out the bag now because we're going to be using this very shortly. But we have a hot swap PCB for the night. Series 1, designed by Copabang and Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia. And I apologize if I butchered any of that pronunciation. This is the... <laughs> this is the PCV for the keyboard tonight. And I would definitely stay Studio Ghibli over Shrek. My wonderful girlfriend in chat, everybody. Actually, let me keep this out because we're needed to reference how many stabilizers we're gonna need, but I'm pretty sure it's just four. And then finally, oh, not finally, actually. There's two pieces here. I'm gonna leave them in the bag for now until we need them later. We have a polycarbonate plate. And then here is the other side clear. Perfect. We have what looks to be plate and case foam. So we'll make it pretty muted of an assembly. We're going to be using NK creams, which are kind of clocky, so hopefully we get some of that resonance through. Um, let me keep the keyboard over here for now. Let's close this up. Okay. And now we can get to our stabilizers. Now, I am not sure if this is a 1.2 or 1.6 PCB. So, I brought a set of each. Hey, man. There's like a stain or a smudge. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's just... Nope, doesn't matter. Not coming off. Um, I'm sure you guys can see that. Not sure where that's from. Hopefully the PCB is all good. Regardless. I mean, it's a hot swap board, so... Put some switches in and don't stress it. <laughs> Let's see. Which stabilizers can we get through tonight? Ah, I got something in my eye. I don't know. I kind of like having a late night stream. It's pretty quaint. I don't, know. I don't even know how to. I'm not, there's not really much different about it. It is calm, but like at the same time, aren't all my streams calm? But then I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, there's something. There's something special about being able to just be up at the upteenth hour knowing that there's nobody else that can possibly be up. Or, I mean, there's just less people in general. Yeah, it's a bit more freeing in the sense that you feel like you can't do any wrong. Um, you don't really have that, that sort of watchful eye over you. Not that, like, you know, I'm being stalked or anything, but just that concept. Yeah. These are, what's that? These are the 1.2... Okay, so it's a 1.6 millimeter PCB. Yeah, there aren't as many watchful eyes, essentially. All right, so we figured out that the Monokai Hero PCB is a 1.6 millimeter thick PCB. And well, the first thing we have to figure out is this is 6.25 or a 7U spacebar. It appears to be 7U. Huh, okay. So now I have to grab not only a 1.6, but a 7U 1.6. I did not expect to be needing so many 7U space bars recently. One second, guys.
I've come to the conclusion that I have to order... Wait a minute. Why does my overhead camera have an audio source? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, have you guys been listening to that audio this entire time? Huh. I did not think that audio was on. I'm hoping that didn't chalk up the beginning of the stream. Let's... Huh. Can I change that in properties to not have any audio capture? Audio output mode. I'll put desktop audio, direct sound, okay. I don't want to use a custom audio source at all. Okay, okay, whatever. Let me just... Okay. Well, fix that issue, luckily, and figure something out. I am out of 7U DX stabilizers. I need to order some more, so... We will be using our 1.6mm 6.25U set, but with a Duroc V2 wire, which isn't necessarily ideal, but it'll work. And... With enough tuning, it'll be fine in the end. A little unfortunate, but it's understandable. Things that happen. Just gotta take out this wire. Hopefully, there's not too much issue. Using a dark wire. Nope. TX die with a dark wire. Not too bad. Cool. Okay, so let's assemble these. I feel like here my webcam should be here, right? Let's see. Yeah, that looks the best to me. I was playing around with them, like with the over shoulder. I have myself over here now. Um, just been playing around, so just to confirm real quick. This is in fact a 7U base bar. Um, and then we just need one, two, three other stabilizers that are all 2U. It's for a total of four. At least I was correct on that one. Let's put this away. All right, and then for now, we can put this on the side. Get my brush set. Get my lube. Then we need three to use. I feel like I say this in every stream, but the rhythmic nature of this is just so... I think that's adding to the whole calmness thing, because it's just so therapeutic. This is... These are things that I just do without really thinking. Um, it's been... It's nice to have this right now. I've been having kind of a... Uh, I wouldn't say hectic, but just a lot of things going on otherwise. Um, I'm early with work, some social things, you know, life. Nothing I can't handle, though. <laughs> with the help of my wonderful family, friends, and especially girlfriend. I love you, too. <laughs> So, for those of you who may be picking this up later on on YouTube, this may be your first time watching the build. You may have stumbled upon the Monokai Hero for whatever reason and really want it. I'll be going through the whole build process, but general things like this order of creating stabilizers, um, which is aspect of keyboard building that are relatively, what's the right word? Standard? Doesn't really matter what keyboard you're building, one way or another, you're going to need stabilizers. Um, and basically, these will stabilize all the keys of length. Ooh, ads in progress. All the keys in length higher than 1.75 units, which would be two units and above. Um, just about anything that isn't six and a quarter high ones have. Uh, 
your band. Oh, my band. Mute. I don't know how to ban a person. Oh, there it is. Whee! Do you want my promotions? I always want your promotions. I do not want these unsolicited promotions, though, so. Okay. I don't know how to ban them in my chat, but I blocked them. Wait, oh, there it is. Bye bye. Ah, uh, new features. I gotta learn how to use them. Oh, actually, where's the chat? Chat here is on this side. Cool. Awesome. Glad we can knock that guy out of here. So, let's get to moving. Uh, we got three two U's and then the one seven U over here. And so, to begin the looping process, let's grab a brush. I'd want a nice wide and flat brush. My classic one right here. And then we can get to looping. First things first, loop of choice, Cytox XHD BDZ. I'm almost out actually, I need to get more of this stuff. Small amount, and then I grab a housing and just go along the interior of the housing. What's the best angle for you guys right there? Right there. See that little bit of streak of the white now. Just go like that all over and just apply a thin. I'd call it like a guide coat for anyone who's familiar with like automotive work. It's not meant to be like a very thick layer or anything. And you just keep that going over and over. And I'll always go over this because you never know who might be hopping in who's new to this and. I don't necessarily want to take the time to go search this stuff, but it is an important thing to know for someone who wants to build first custom and have it done to a, I don't know, good spec, I guess would be the right word there. Just something that's pleasant to the ears as a mechanical keyboard. Oh, tonight's a good night. Tonight's a very good night. Had a good time with my girlfriend and her best friend. Just kind of chilled out. Night in type stuff. Those are the best kinds of nights. <laughs> Hang out with you is the best. Yes, very true. Still incredibly tired though, I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna do late night streams very often, but they do have their merits for when you're on that kind of schedule. But we have an extended weekend for those of us working in America. I'm not sure what other countries may possibly have a holiday on that. For sure here it is very nice to have. And I appreciate every which and one of you that's able to watch this, whether it be Currently on this day, over their weekend, or over on YouTube, or maybe in a clip somewhere. Maybe you stumble on this because of a clip, because obviously I'm not going to clip this very specific section, but actually, maybe I will. I don't know. I don't know if that's a valuable information to have, just sort of an appreciation post, but we'll see. Maybe I'll post this up somewhere. We'll see. I don't really have too many updates this time. I feel like last time I had a lot more information to give, but... Recently, things have been relatively docile. I mean, cleaned up my setup. Actually, I guess I could talk about... Um, uh, I guess going into the new year, like... I don't really want to call them New Year's resolutions, but more like kind of goals I have for myself and... Of course, the principal one for anyone who's been on Twitch or my YouTube channel is just to stream more. Um, whether that be presently or in the future, I just feel like I could be doing so much more and I want to be doing so much more. I just kind of got to get myself there amongst my other responsibilities to really grind at it. And it's not always easy, but I do have a great support system behind me. 
Yeah, that's where I was going. Um, so for right now, as far as the stream goes, and as far as Valorant goes, I mean, I'm sure you guys who are here for my keyboard streams don't really care for my gaming streams, but those of you who are into keyboards and tactical shooters, I'd like to consider myself a pretty good Valorant player. I'm Diamond 3. Um, I was on the cusp of Ascendant, and then we got the new act, so I gotta regrind, but... I want to start taking that game more seriously. I've been getting a lot more um, aspirational towards it as I've been watching more pro play. Um, you know, last year was nice uh, with Optic sort of relative dominance. Uh, besides being dehested by Loud at the, the final world champs. But in general, that kind of gives you a sense of uh, not only pride, but want to sort of be there. And then watching Red Bull, was it Proving Grounds? Home Grounds? And then this past weekend, the Tarek Ludwig Invitational. It's kind of stuff that makes you feel like, you know, I, I could be there. And I definitely feel as though I can, and I'm going to strive for that. But all in due time, with care and respect given, and I appreciate that, man. With uh, care and respect given to the people around me, the responsibilities that I still take care of. We're going to try. We're going to try. And yeah, I was just, that was probably the biggest one streaming and taking Valorant more seriously. And then, um, just kind of applying myself where I care because I don't have an issue with my day job. Um, it pays the bills, but that's just about all it really does for me. And that's not necessarily something I want to be, I guess, dealing with for the rest of my life. So we'll see. Where my aspirations lead me if i can stay consistent if i can stay motivated if i can get myself up out of bed every morning and get shit done but i guess this is the first step yeah all right babe we talked about this extensively it's nice to sort of air out in a more public forum i guess but you're damn right <laughs> we're gonna keep going and honestly i mean i feel like Past my girlfriend has probably been the main thing kind of driving me in general. Um, one of the most surprising but sort of astounding things is just the viewership on YouTube after the fact. I mean, I appreciate everyone who could hop in live, but not everybody could really hop into a live stream at whatever hour I'm streaming in whatever country for two plus hours, you know, because we don't know how long this keyboard stream is going to be. You know, this keyboard is already coming along swimmingly. I'm almost done with the stabilizers, all things considered, and... You know we're moving right along so i don't know how long this stream will be in particular but not everybody can really just just dedicate time to this um when it's happening timings just don't always work out and it's nice to try a different timing to sort of shake things up and see where the viewership ends up but ultimately a lot of you have been really good to me over on the youtube side of things and i appreciate anyone who comments anyone who likes the videos i do notice that even though my likes are in low numbers even though my viewership relatively speaking to other keyboard creators isn't great you guys still somehow get me to triple digits and any amount of likes is fully appreciated we are inclusive of all time zones you're damn fucking right anyone is welcome in my stream Welcome any and all followers, non new people, seasoned veterans. Doesn't even matter if you speak the same language as me. If you're in here, you're in here for a reason. And whatever that reason may be, it is appreciated on my end. Hopefully it's known of, but Yeah. I don't know, I need to find more ways to engage with you guys. I want to get more emotes to to give some more love to the stream. I want to be active more in general, but that comes with streaming more and just, I don't know, growing something real. Having, I feel like a lot of, a lot of what I what I get on YouTube, I should really be looking at and sort of capitalizing on. Not, not in sort of an advantageous sense, but more so giving you guys more to, more to look at. Because clearly I'm doing something right.
Well, besides that, a lot of my other goals have been sort of financial outside of my car. Um, I talk, I'll talk about my car for ages on stream, but, you know, when you're a car guy who also can't necessarily afford to pick his own cars just based on circumstances, you know, you kind of want to deal with the hands that you're dealt and you want to make the best of it. And that's what I've been trying to do, but not necessarily the easiest thing with the platform I'm on. Um, third gen legacy, second gen Outback, so BH chassis. Not a lot of aftermarket support. I'm kind of looking at a lot of parts from Japan and that stuff isn't cheap. And then anything domestic is either poorly made or really old and needs some work. Currently, you should make a burning command for anyone that wants to talk about cars. I should. I should. I have in my um my about section for anyone who's curious. You know, I'm into graphic design. I'm into keyboards. I'm into cars. I'm a software engineer by trade. That's what I went to. Well, not by trade. Sorry. That's what I went to college for. That's what my degrees in. Um, I'm an environmental site inspector by trade. Um, and yeah, I've got a lot of things in this brain that if anyone wanted to pick at by any means, um, I'm willing to talk about. Um, but yeah, my car, the nice leaky valve covers as per usual on Subarus, um, gonna be changing those soon. I have basically all new front suspension, bushings, replacement arms, then I gotta get to the rear, and then at least in the short term, that's all that needs to be done on my car. I'm gonna raise it up, cause currently I'm on coilovers, but the car's really low, a lot lower for my taste than I currently like, so gonna raise the car going to oh gonna get that in there so yeah raise the car um put on all new bushings for the front new control arms on the front and i think that's it for now and then the control arms in the rear and then that's it suspension's done the car should ride fine and i should be happy assuming that nothing breaks valve cover gaskets need to be changed because i'm what, I'm not necessarily pissing oil, but I'm definitely got some oil leakage. And then besides that, the car is great. Some interior stuff that needs to be sorted out. I have some weird gremlin with my speaker system that was not installed by me previously. So I got to sort that out where for whatever reason, at certain points in time, my speakers just won't work. My subwoofer will. So it's some issue in between um, my amplifier and my speakers i'm not sure at first i thought it was the amplifier itself but because of its inconsistency the fact that it turns on and all turns on at all tells me that it's most likely not the amplifier it's most likely an issue with one of the solder joints in the electrical system because for whatever reason whoever took the time to install these components in my car thought that it would be a great idea to absolutely mangle and ravage all of the factory harness and directly tap in for the head unit for the speakers um and really didn't bother doing anything properly but i guess how the cookie crumbles when you're getting a car with relatively unknown history and work but otherwise i'm pretty happy with the thing i'll end up replacing the amplifier and all the wiring eventually anyways little by little we begin with the first stabilizer end put together that's for our space bar with the Garak V2 now, um, wire, let me just pop this out now, make sure I add a little bit of lube there. Okay, cool. Okay. First stabilizer and put together. Let's see if we can get that in the overhead. Because I switched off because of the darkness. But against my hands, it actually looks good. So, yeah. So, oof, let me add some more in the bottom there. With the wire, necessarily, you want to be relatively generous. You don't have to be crazy with it. A little bit messy. We're most likely going to end up adding lube in the end um, when we're tuning. But overall, not bad. And we just keep doing this over and over. Just keep. Adding lube at the contact points between the stabilizer um, housing, which is the plastic ends that the stem or wire goes into, and then the wire itself where it connects to the set plastic points. I think I said the same thing twice just now, just inverted in order. But we're going to ignore that. <laughs> Let 
there what i could do to same thing different font literally what just happened yes i appreciate you noticing so let's just dab a little bit of lube where the stem will enter and holster into on the housing and then once we're done lubing that up we put the wire in and just clip it in there we go that's our uh, space bar everybody now on to the little guys but yeah i have so many so many like goals and things i want to do and and plans and ideas and just different w conceptions of the same thing that are just in different stages of my life where i'm just like i could actually do this or no i have to wait on this and this hasn't happened in the future you know things to save up for things to aspire to but things that are also very attainable for me in the moment i don't really give myself enough credit for having that sense of attainability with certain things that i want because like of course you know money is a thing you develop money and all that but in a lot of ways what i'm trying to do here is very attainable you know this is this is a matter of me dedicating time or, or finding that time you know amongst the, the chaos of what is a chaos but amongst the um the everyday responsibilities that i have because i want to be able to I want to be able to do everything i want to be able to, to spend time with my uh with my girlfriend i want to spend time with my cat i want to um do well you know d do my job at work you know i want to get enough sleep i want to want to feel good about myself there's a lot of things there where you really sit down and think about it and then you kind of i don't know try to you find that first step and then you're like wait this is actually pretty fucking attainable that's how it feels every time i turn on the stream again you know i sometimes i'm pretty stressed sometimes i'm really like uh maybe i won't get like viewership or whatever maybe i'll get it into my own head but none of that really matters i put my foot into the door and it makes me want to keep going and i'm going to at whatever pace i can and make sure the over shoulder camera doesn't have a weird camera input as well if the over shoulder camera doesn't have audio then what audio output okay feel very nice it doesn't even have an audio device. Eat the lube. Oh my god, please don't start with eating the lube. We're not doing eating the lube. We're not doing eating the lube. Let me see. Let me figure out how much to eat the lube. You want to pay me to eat lube? Is that really what we're doing, guys? what was my price last time i can't remember what my price was when my brother paid to have me taste a little dab of lube well my, my brother and a few friends of mine and a hug five dollars and a hug how long is this hug <laughs> depends the uh the duration of the hug five minute long hug it's a pretty hard bargain you're driving there. Just gonna add a little bit more lube again where the uh, wire is going to go into the housing. Guys, I don't know. I gotta I gotta think about this deal now. I've got I've got a pr pretty good proposition here. Question is, do I go for it though? For anyone just tuning in, unfortunately, I'm out of 7U um, TX wires, so I got 7U um, Rock V2 wire. Oh, thanks, babe. Yeah, for anyone wondering what the whole build is, um, we got the Monokai Hero and Olive. So that um, showed that at the beginning, but obviously, you guys will get to see that again as I finish repairing these stabilizers. Um, TX stabs, uh, Novel Keys, NK Creams Launch Editions, the, uh, the light blue ones um and then monokai series one white on black and that is what today's build is consistent of it should look amazing right at the end i actually really like the green color even though it's not the like true like deep olive that i would want um it is still a nice shade of green i'm not gonna lie i love my shades of green I hope they actually call the color olive. I didn't actually check the uh, the listing. I just um actually don't I have the shipping with me? 
Yeah, olive green top and silver bottom um, with the matching Kaban. I also have the silver uh, special edition commissioned that I need to build as well. This was just um, the one that I wanted to start on just to get familiar with the platform before I touch the special edition because the special edition is all shiny silver PVD. That is the consistency of the entirety of the special edition case and it terrifies me. So I wanted to make sure I didn't mess up on the much lighter regular edition first before, you know, basically get accustomed to the chassis. And then, I mean, granted, I'm not throwing these things around or anything, but just in the build process, I don't want to potentially mess anything up on a surface that is very prone to showing blemishes or disfigurements. Speaking of, I actually have two QK65s to build and a SCOG reboot in yellow with the wireless option. My, uh, my client really has an affinity for keyboards to the point where I'm getting constant builds that I really need to take care of and I will continue to do so as time permits. Actually, speaking of which, since I'm on the topic, uh, oh my god, why is this not going in? Ow! Okay. Oh, man! It probably was too hard to tell with the uh, overhead. That took a lot of force, but I'll show you guys real quick my, uh, my new little organization structure. Um, right here, if I can just unhook my camera and just delicately point it over here a little bit difficult to see so it's sideways obviously but we have an ikea what is the word i forgot what the name of the ikea pegboard is but the scotus i believe scotus whatever um and then i've got these little containers of switches um new and old part of the collections that we're going to be using very shortly but for now we return to this Then where's the ball? There it is. Cool. Nah. Okay, that was a lot, but we figured it out, everybody. Nice. Oh, now we're in frame. Okay, not nice. How did I end up in frame? I didn't even... Oh. I didn't move the camera vertically, but this happened there. That's a little bit annoying. Hmm. Is there a way to get this thing out of frame? Hmm. Maybe out of frame, frame over here. Nope. Regardless, it is in frame. What changed that put this thing in frame now? It's gonna bother me. Now we're no longer in frame. Perfect. But now I must angle this correctly. That. Then get back to this. This is edge of the table. This is middle. Okay, cool. Perfect. Sorry about that. <laughs> Last stabilizer, guys. I can get on with the build and wrap this thing up. And the only reason I'm saying wrap it up is just because the keyboard itself won't take too long to put together. It is a hot swap PCB. The client did not opt for um, solder. You know, they probably have commitment issues. Um, as my girlfriend so beautifully tends to just loft off to rest, to sleep. Why does he to rest? But, you know, whatever.
gone. <laughs> support the ones that support you, everybody. There's nothing else you learn from my stream. <laughs> And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we continue with the build. Every second that I'm doing this, I'm sort of reminding myself, like, why don't I just keep doing this? It's just so much fun. Well, I shouldn't say fun. I guess the so calm, so nice, so relaxing. Just literally using a little paintbrush and being a little Bob Ross on stream. I hope that you guys, you know, find the time to yourselves to to have these kinds of moments. It's very important with how fast paced life could be in general nowadays. Everyone can you tend to miss it and I don't know. So these are sort of those conscious moments where my hair stops being annoying. But um you sort of just look around and sort of just enjoy what's right in front of you. Wait, actually, is the music not coming through? I just realized something. Okay, should be better. I think it wasn't coming through before. It better be coming through now. That's absurd. We'll continue on. We're currently lubing our last stabilizer. And then we can get on with the rest of the keyboard build. These are 1.6 millimeter TX stabilizers for anyone just joining us. If you want to get any more info, please do exclamation point build. Um, that command will be able to tell you everything you need to know. But yeah. Nice been pretty nice, and it's been nice to sit back, reflect, and I don't know, not stress about it too much. Alright, so inserting a little bit more where the wire will be going in. Okay, with all of our stabilizers in place. Now let's get our PCB again. Okay, now add all of these stabilizers onto our PCB here. First things first, our 7U spacebar, which I managed to put in upside down. Good job, Elvin. Whoops. Okay. Well, now, let's add more lube onto the other side and onto the stem itself, because a lot of it did. Rub off into that section, and then let's, if we're going to turn this around this way, yeah. Need to add some more onto this side, and then we pick up the stem that just dropped. There, put the wire in, and then the wire is in place. We simply okay. yeah, stabilizers perfectly assembled. Then the pivot section on the front goes into the bigger hole, and then. The bottom section and goes through. Oh, push through and push through. Now let's do that for the next three. For anyone wondering, these are push in style TX tabs, hence the way in which they are pushed in, not screwed in like a traditional Duroc V2 or so. But I'm sure that if you're, I guess, what a keyboard enthusiast. I guess is the terminology an aficionado in a sense. 
probably be aware of TX Labs by now, widely regarded as the best in the game currently. Um, but they've really been just been nice to me, so I don't really have any complaints. I don't really want to say they're the best. I don't feel like I have enough experience otherwise i've used duroc i've used c3 i've used these so far these are my favorite but i've only used two other types so um okay so all of our wires are in place now we're going to grab our switch plate which is in the caban with the case Ooh, there's a glimpse at the keyboard for those of you who were not in earlier here's our foam don't currently need the case foam but i will be using plate foam I want to see how much we can isolate the the tactile, the switches themselves, the linear switches, simply because I've always found the NK creams to be very, very clacky. And I want to know if um, isolating that sound with essentially a muted board, that's basically what it's going to come out to be, um, if it's possible to isolate it in a way that actually sounds a little bit more pleasing and not as sharp tone i'm hoping that the polycarbonate plate coupled with the interior foam will deepen the sound and add some more i guess bass to it so here we have our plate foam gonna add that over the pcb first that goes over here this way and then we have our polycarbonate plate Okay. I have no idea what this means down here. If anyone does, by all means, let me know either in the comments or in chat live. If you're here right now and you would by chance know what that means in whatever language that may be. So we have that. And then we just start adding some switches. Luckily, this is a hot swap keyboard, so things are pretty easy to just go in and out. No soldering required. Honestly, kind of way to, to do things nowadays, in my opinion, because there's no real, like, at least in my opinion, there's no real advantage to solder. I mean, besides the occasional switch popping out that doesn't happen, um, which is nice to be able to swap between whatever switches you may want at any given moment. Personally, not a big linear guy, but the owner of the keyboard is, and so we honor that, of course. Hoping that these sound pretty good in this configuration. I guess we'll see when the time comes. I'll add some more keys just to stabilize the plate. The one in the corners. Okay. 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 Everything's stable now. Let's get to our key caps. Just move the bags here. Fun. So, anyone's coming from Instagram, you already know. White on Black Series 1. Courtesy of Monokai. This is a full Monokai build, visually speaking. Set. 
Fresh out the box. That is a 6.25 U space bar. Oh no, that's 7 U actually. Huh. Did not realize that by default, the top slot came with a 7 U space bar. That's. I guess that makes sense when the builds come with 7 U's. Okay. I'm just gonna need left shift and turn back straight. Uh, with all the <laughs> stabilizers populated, let me quickly set up the audio in a way that allows you guys to hear this. Let's quickly turn off my noise gate. <laughs> Just had to sneeze for a second, disable the noise gate. Make sure you guys point it downwards, and then let's listen up. So you can really see what's going on here. Okay, okay. Microphone is there, so you guys can pick up there. So then, Okay, so you got right side of enter. Backspace sounds good. Actually, left side of backspace, right side of enter, right side of spacebar. That's what needs to be tuned. And in order to tune these really quickly, what we're gonna do is, okay, let's switch to relative to up. Great tolerances there. In order to do so, okay, please don't build a key switch out again. Holy shit. These keycaps are strong. Oh my. Okay. <sighs> Jesus. All of them are gonna get ripped out? Yeah, they are. Okay. <sighs> okay, this molds. The molds on this side are insane. Literally went exactly four for four. And I can't separate it. Jesus. I don't know if that has to do with the NK cream stem or the inner stem on the switches, but something is not letting go. Um, okay. So with that all taken care of, let's tune really quickly, which we will be doing courtesy of a syringe filled with Crytox 205 grade zero. So all you gotta do is here is in the back, a little hole, and then you just stick this in the hole and then plunge until effectively the area that you want covered in lube is covered in lube. Add a little bit where the wire meets the housing. And then don't go too crazy, but of course, like this one when it comes to lubing, Oh, this stab actually popped out a little bit. Let's make sure that none of the other stabs popped out. Nope, nope, I don't want any smoke, okay. Then we needed right side of enter, same deal, just find the back slot, add lube, and then if we find here, add in lube. And then it was the left side of enter as well. And then here in the front, we'll 
stabilizer needs housing. Okay. And now let me very quickly, while we're here, I'm going to add these pegs to the back of the stabilizers. Now, what these do is essentially ensure that you cannot accidentally pull up the stabilizer. Um, it essentially wedges in between this lower line, um, in between the two, I guess, prongs that poke through on the stabilizer. So, yeah, so you need these little blockers or spudgers or whatever the term may be that will go in between those two sections of stabilizer and then we'll wedge it basically into the PCB and that's kind of your security without needing a screw okay now you can see one with the blocker and now one without And now we just do that seven more times, as it is uh, two for each stabilizer. And just very quickly get through that. Because this is honestly probably the most uneventful section of the build, because this is just kind of something that is a byproduct of the installation method of these stabilizers that is otherwise pretty annoying and I guess to a degree pretty boring but I guess if you're new to this this wouldn't be too boring if you haven't seen this game done like a million times already where the hell did that go? oh it fell in the box over here and it just flew out of my finger okay come on Somebody's got to have like an amazing method for this. There's no way. I was just struggling with my fat fingers. Do you have like a technical use for these things? Like just want to make them more difficult kind of because they're kind of delicate. So with tweezers, I feel like I have a little bit of grip on them. Okay. Three more. <sighs> okay. And now for the last two of these. I have to put the rest of these set in there. the last of these in and the last one there's a put our keycaps back on and retest our stabs okay there we go now let's get back to testing shall we we got enter right here spacebar seven backspace And finally, left shift. Okay. Listen up. Spacebar sounds good. Left shift sounds good. Anything a little bit more on the right side of enter. And backspace sounds good to me. Coming out a little bit more on the right side of enter. And then call that set. I'm going to leave the rest of the switches on as to not deal with pulling out. I mean, the rest of the keycaps on as to not deal with pulling out more switches. But let's add a little bit more here on the front side of it. And then on the back, 
much is in there enough to fill up all those gaps I believe yeah nice nice um, okay cool now let's really quickly retest everything perfect and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very easy method to do up your stabilizers. Now, before we get to the rest of the PCB, what we will do here is put in the rest of our switches. Again, these are stock Intercream launchers. Actually, I believe they're lubed. Let me. They sound lightly lubed to me. Um, I was received them from the client, which typically he provides loop switches, um, unless he sends them to me directly from manufacturer, uh, directly from distributor. Um, typically, they are lubed. So, I'm gonna go ahead and limb and say these are lubed MK Cream Launch Editions. Um, though I cannot entirely remember. this rotate you guys back around put up my noise gate always 22 oops wrong camera and then lastly music's back up there we go absolutely love simple 65 percent designs i myself run a portal 65 i'm a big tactile guy so these switches aren't really going to be my thing at the end of the night but they're still a very well made switch they're still very comfortable to type on they still do satisfy me in terms of just the typing experience in general i just never have um i i've always been a stickler for that tactile bump Currently running Holy Pandas. Some of my favorites are going to be Gazoo Boba U4Ts. And by extension, Gazoo Boba U4s. For when I want that silent switcher. The hell happened to this guy? Oh. Um. Where's my switch puller? guys that uh okay we'll put that aside because we have a crap ton of them so just ignore the one bad one whatever is wrong with it yeah i guess it was just a fluke i wonder what's caught in the switch for it to be doing that though would it would it be hung up on because I mean, it's possible it was over lubed But that doesn't really seem like over to me. It generally just seems like it's getting caught on something. Because as soon as it gets r over whatever it's stuck on, it'll just keep going. As it's supposed to. Like it'll look no normal otherwise. I think it's going to look so good at the end of the day, this olive. Oh my god, it's to die for. Again, I would have preferred a more foresty green kind of olive, something a little bit deeper. Um, but it is still stunning. I don't think that'll ever ever be something for me quite like just keyboard building. This is such a nuanced niche, you know, object at the end of the day that most people don't even really think when they interact with that like they can assemble their own, but something that I stumbled upon and now I just do regularly. <laughs> so it's just kind of nice to to just sit here and think and like, oh wait, yeah, this is kind of 
cool and like different in terms of just an everyday activity. Something to spice up my life a little bit, make it a little bit more different than the next. That's really pleasant. What the? What is wrong with? Okay, so that's two now. Wait, but what? Now the switch is just. I'm still just gonna grab another one, um, cause what the hell? But that was weird. I'll open those switches up later and sort them out for the client so when whenever he wants them back um but that was just but just for the sake of keeping the build going at a steady pace instead of disassembling and dissecting switches on stream would you guys be interested in watching that actually i have a lot of switches that i need to lube and film um i've got uh i believe these are called milkshake i don't even know they're, they're a tactile switch next to me i think it's neapolitan ice cream something like that Something, something dessert -y. I have to, um, lube and potentially film if they allow. I love filming tactiles. Gives them a lot more base, but there's not many tactiles I own that allow for that because their housing tolerances are so tight as is. The Gazoo Boba and U4s and the, um, the Holy Pandas don't lend themselves to filming, and those are the main tactiles I have. I also have NK Blueberries, but I don't believe I was able to film those either. I gotta double check, but either way. Um, did not have the best experience on the tactile and the thing, so hopefully the new tech tiles I have, which I believe are Neapolitan or some something dessert related, it's uh pull one over. These pink upper housings, translucent bottoms with uh well, milky bottoms with these brown colored stems. I don't remember what exactly they're called. I did get them from Swag Keys, and I watched a few videos, listened to a few sound tests, and I really like how deep and talky they were, and I'm hoping I can replicate that with some minor lubrication and filming. Hopefully the installation of our poron gaskets doesn't uh, take me too long. Hopefully we have no switch mishaps, because I don't know what the failure rate on these things are, but so far I'm not having the best of times. And if they're opened up, that's one thing. I'm not too sure if they were or not. And there's another one. Just back. Okay, well. That's fine. Whatever's wrong with them. Take a look. Hopefully it's nothing too complicated. And I'm repeating myself at this point, but just in case it didn't come across the first time, if you guys want to watch me loop switches, learn how to loop switches, and just have a bit of a longer stream, because looping switches take several hours, um, no matter what. Just There are ways to make it a little bit more efficient, such as bag lubing, um, which I do implore on springs. But in general, it's kind of a pain in the ass that is just incredibly tedious. And that's why people charge what they charge for lubed or film switches. Now this switch is sticking. What the hell? I'm not bending like the, the leaf either. The, um, the legs are just fine. So it's not like anything's bent. Okay. Whatever. We have all these other just fine switches. I'm hoping this is just these because they were probably opened up and opened up and lubed. 
hoping that this isn't like uh, an issue with creams. But I've never worked with them outside of um, the standard and the tactiles. I'm not sure if the uh, the launch editions have any type of difference. From what I understand, they're the same thing, just a different spring. Um, but I'm not too sure about that. Okay, with all of our switches in place, we met the suicide spot. Okay. Let me put our leftover switches back into their container. Close that up and leave the broken switches on top, just so I remember to do that later. And then let's do a quick cleanup job. Let's put the, uh, the lube stuff away. Off to the side. And then drop my lens caps. Um, now we can grab the. Ooh, this is hefty already. Interesting. Let me really quick do a quick scan of all the uh, the legs and make sure that all of these switches are pushed through properly. You always check for straightness prior, but just want to quickly check and make sure that I didn't bend anything. Though, yes, like I just mentioned, you always check prior. I did check prior. I'm just a little bit paranoid when it comes to these things. Okay. Um, second to last row. And the last row. And. Yeah, I guess all the switches got their legs through. It's good to see. Except for this one. There we go. That's Now that's all the way through. Right. No. That one's actually bent. Where's my switchboard? Oh, I lied. That one was straight. Okay. Next one. Next one, maybe? Thought it looked. It didn't look straight on the other side. Ow. Both of which were straight. I guess their tips were just a little bit darker than the rest because I couldn't really see them as well as the rest, but. Either way, let's get to the housing. I mean, the case now. Hmm. Top of this foam. Because the first thing we're going to need to do is put on some poron. For anyone who hadn't seen it earlier, we got Case here, Malachi Hero, Silver Bottom, Olive Green Top. Let's put on our gaskets. Well, uh, sorry, let's put on our pour on feet first, then our gaskets. Accessory pouch. We have everything that we're going to need for this build. These are the pour on gaskets for the build itself. Then we have. The screwdriver we're going to need, and then our bump on feet. Dang, these three M adhesive stickers are not on centered, which is kind of bugging me. Also, making it kind of difficult to peel. I guess that's to make it easier to peel. You have more side on one side to put your finger off to, but still, these things are easy to peel. Oh my god, am I taking off the whole adhesive strip at this point? I am. <sighs> so frustrating. Oh, there we go. I got one thing. Yep, I got one. Okay, step one of four. In this particular instance, um, next one, please come on. Oh, 
I was watching in their build video they used um tweezers for the poron gas stick, so I will employ the same strategy um just to make sure that everything comes along okay. so I don't possibly mess anything up with my fat fingers. And last foot, put the nail under there, peel that off. Okay, put that trash to the side. And then put our last foot on the bottom. And now with our feet in appropriate positioning, we move this home. And we put this right side like this. I'm gonna use my iFixit toolkit instead of the supplied screwdriver. Keep in mind you don't need this. This is simply something that I like to do for efficiency purposes, but the kit does come with the screwdriver you need already to completely disassemble and reassemble it. I just like to make my life harder. Let me see, is this the correct size? Oh, one size up. So it appears to be T2. Wait, are these even in the correct spots? Oh, I'm sorry, it's T5. These are T5 screws. Yeah, T5. Cool. So, oh, T5 screws, get your T5 bit head, and then just fold it down. There are four screws that are going to be holding the PCB to the bottom of the chassis. You guys see everything that's happening. Okay, keep those in there. And. Got them scratching and de-energizing, move that off. And then we can begin applying our gasket, some of which have to go on the back of this face. You notice those grooves there. And then the rest of which will go on the bottom, which you see all the grooves around here. Yep, we're gonna be using a lot of gaskets tonight. Let's put all of our screws together over here. And then let me grab my tweezers for gasket application. I'm sure you can do this by hand. I'm just following along with the Mono Kai build video as to make sure that I do things the most delicately that I can to sort of make this a little bit more of a swimming operation here. First up, done. Now we're just gonna do that like twenty more times, something like that. A lot. Got a lot of gaskets here. Don't know if we're gonna use every single one of them, but at least in on this particular half of the case, the bottom half, there's quite a lot needed. I would assume that this that this. Um, strip packaging carries some extras because boron gaskets can be i wouldn't say finicky but it's definitely easy to deform them um it's because of the nature of the material it's so i don't know giving <laughs> it's so uh spongy in a sense so you can definitely deform these but so far, it's honestly kind of a cakewalk. And any of this can be just peeled right off and then refixed in most cases. That one got picked up a little. So 
because we have extras. I think we're trying to peel them back up, probably even. I think is what is a fair choice, but okay. I'll grab a fresh one. Off the plastic. It does have a really sticky adhesive as you would hope anyway, so kind of thing. Actually, it's not too bad by hand. With how thick they are, they're actually pretty easy to line up. My insulin pump keeps going off. Why does that? High alert. Let's see. Let's get myself some insulin, shall we? Yeah. For those who are unaware, which you know me, you know already, I'm diabetic. So yeah, I was just dealing with my insulin pump for a second. I believe I also put it in my tags for the stream, but I don't know how many people read those. This is probably going to be the longest like stretch of the build, really. Just with uh, the time it takes to unstick and restick all these gaskets into their appropriate slots. A lot of gaskets on this thing. It gets properly crazy. I wonder if we're going to need this many on the top half or how they were basically designed for it work in conjunction with each other or be on the plate there because of course these gaskets are going to be like sandwiching the plate or the the, case, the two case halves together with the plate in between so i wonder if these interact at all with that in terms of um either placement if they're alternating or if they're in the exact same positions and just sandwiching the same positions on both sides They leave a lot of room for, I shouldn't say room for error, but these, the cutouts are actually wider than the gaskets themselves. So if you're not dead nuts on, it's actually pretty forgiving. Yeah. So those are all those gaskets applied now. Now we have to do the bottom case. I mean the top case, sorry. We just did the bottom case. The top case, it looks like it has roughly all the same cutouts in the same relative positions, just now top half. Ooh. Okay. And then I just kind of got to put it in place and we'll flatten the rest out. Cool. Right. I like the way that this was designed. Let me just... Oh no, let me just bend these back a little bit. They're being a little bit cumbersome with the way that they're um they're creased. So let me just do this a few times. Okay. Better. Flatter than it was. going man i wonder how expensive it is to uh, manufacture these flying gaskets it can't be much right just once you've got the equipment to sort of um with the mass production level that these gaskets are in it kind of pays for itself no i would assume they're like laser cut or something you just put them up on the That is a very big assumption, by the way. I know nothing about how gasket manufacturing really works. It's just what logically makes sense to me. That I'm sort of adding up in my head. Hmm. What can I do? Can I just tell him he's here? 
time to come out. There. Ooh, perfect. I like that. Cool, 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 cool. Actually, is that going to come over here? No, it does not come up in the shot. Okay. Awesome. Just to give you guys a little bit more vision as we clear our top case because of how the like upper edge of it is really blocking most of my lighting. Oh, that one folded in on itself. Huh. Let's pull that. Oh. Perfect. All right, let's pick this next one up. Okay. I was fighting for that one for a while, but we got it, boys and girls. Anything else under the sun? Last two. Okay. Last one. Awesome. All of our gaskets are now installed. There we go. Now, all that's left for the case is to put it together so what we do here is we get our bottom half zoom out a little get our bottom half put our assembly inside with all of our switches all of our gaskets rest that into place essentially and then top of the case assembly just slides on With it slid on now, all we gotta do is reinstall our screws again. T5. Oh, they're non ferrous. Okay, well, that's great. No disrespect to Monokai or any manufacturer who use non ferrous screws, they're technically more premium, they're just more of a 
campaign to work with. And then in their video, they say to aim away from the keyboard. So this way. That's one. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot a very crucial step, everybody. This is going to be very embarrassing in a second. Let's, uh, you guys tell me what you noticed that I'm missing here. <laughs> yeah, the daughter board. <laughs> Let's get that out really quickly. Is that T or is that, what kind of screws are those? Let's see. These are torques, no, hex. I believe they're torques. They look like torques to me. Okay, let's put our JSD connector one end here. Okay, one in there. And then gotta put in the four screws, which also serve as grounds for the PCB. Fun fact for those of you that didn't know. I'm not sure if that's the case for all cases. Um, I know I say that because these screws are, um, I don't know if standardized is the right word, but essentially a lot of cases now use this exact same PCB and connector setup. But yeah, same T5 head. Um, not sure if it's the same thread pitch, but at least the... We don't have to change bits for this assembly. Don't go crazy. Once it's snug, just leave it. Um, these are very, very tiny screws. That goes for anything keyboard assembling. Just get it snug. Don't break anything. Live to build another day. <laughs> Last one of the four, and we connect the daughter board to the PCB, and then we re-screw everything together. It would be smart of Monokai to have made use the same screws, though, as the rest of the case, so that way you could just carry extras of the same thing, just in case for whatever reason you need extras. So then, JST connector connects on the back side here. Let me see, is that correct on the bottom that it's going? Yeah. Is that not correct? Are the pins on top? Oh wow, the pins are on top, okay. So I have to go around and actually flip this. Oopsie, I thought the pins would be on the bottom just based on their placing, but my bad. Now that's fully plugged in, we simply take the cable, route it where it's supposed to be routed, and then off the anchor. That's all on. Now, let's make sure that this slides on correctly. And for some reason, it isn't now. Oh, you need it to be angled when you slid it on. USB C port lines up. You guys can see that there. And now, all that must be done is this must be screwed. Now, what we were doing previously, just same T5 torque screws into the top.
uh, one thing I'd recommend for anything mounting, when anything is being hard mounted to another surface, I always recommend distributing pressure evenly. So putting um, any fasteners, in this case screws, in opposite patterns. So I'm doing an X pattern. Um, so simply just going across. So this led to this, which will now lead to this, which will then lead to this one. And then that way you can make sure that mounting pressure is distributed in the process of assembly and you don't really stress this. Okay, so now it's all the way in, last one. And one thing that they do note on the Monokai assembly video is that when you want to be doing this, you want to be running basically the same angle as the board. So it's six degrees, seven, six or seven degrees. Um, and just basically angled away from the top of the keyboard, essentially. Only so slightly whenever you're inserting these screws. Just because I, I would assume that's following the, um, the angle of the case assembly itself. So slightly tilted back towards yourself if you're... Uh, if you're looking at the keyboard uh, directly, so space bar being the bottom section, access being the top, if that's your perspective. Okay. Got a little bit of lube on our insert key a little bit. Look at us. Now we'll just put together our keycaps. And just put fix the toolkit away. Now we're done with that. Tap on that very quickly. Clean it up so slightly while I get the rest of the keycaps so that way I don't have too much work to do after the stream. <laughs> you guys can accompany me on this cleaning journey. So we're going to put all the gaskets together. Um, Screws go with the daughter board, which is no longer a thing. So I'll just make one giant bag using the bags I already supplied. So this does that. That's the anti-static or ESD safe bag, which will then go into this bigger bag, which had the gaskets, the screwdriver itself, and then the gaskets and all that. Um, screwdriver away now. Okay, that's our accessory package. Everything else is trash. Um, let us put everything in the kaban. So that would be this bag. The bags for the subsequent ohms. Please. Fold that inwards and then it was folded that way. So that, that, that. Oh, we didn't put the case phone. Huh. Hmm. We'll probably do that. <laughs> Let's do that really quickly. Sorry about that, guys. I need my toolkit one more time. A little bit unfortunate, but at least we didn't put the keycaps on. So again, T5. Basically. Doing what we just did backwards. Move all the screws. Um, uh, making sure that move them at appropriate angle, and then we would simply pull up on the two case halves very delicately. All four screws are still in place, roughly. Now, as far as the daughter board is probably going to. Okay, this has to tuck under. Pull that out. Tuck under. And then it'll go through. You use these half moon shapes to line yourself up cut out for these screws. Then 
Wait a minute. I missed a gasket place. A gasket uh, installation portion. That's weird. Huh. I wonder how I managed to do that one. Okay, well, let's just quickly add a gasket one. I, huh, I guess I missed it. Weird. I say I don't remember. Yeah, but I guess that's the point, right? Oh, I thought I would have watched back the VOD and been like, oh, fuck. I had to disassemble this thing. Make sure I don't do that on the top side, shall we? Nope, all the cutouts are satisfied as far as I can tell. Put this thing back in. Okay. Okay, now we're really all the way with the foam. Okay. Now to the Finally put the screws on for the last time. Jeez. So again, cross pattern. Go bottom right warrants top left, which will warrant bottom left, which will warrant top right. Please make sure, guys, that you're following your angles correctly. Um, accidentally dropped the top case of my fix-it tool case for the, uh, the screwdriver. So again, please make sure that you're following their advice, following the angle of the keyboard when you're screwing in the in the screw. Just in case, you never know. You don't want to potentially strip threads um, and have to tap or figure something out in terms of that was fun. Okay. Fully done. Now let's put this away one more time. Cool. Completed keyboard build. Got tweezers away. Put all the gaskets and stuff away. Fix it. Okay. Gaskets and all the bags. Appreciate everyone being patient. Everyone who's been watching the stream tonight. Just uh, basically done with the keyboard assembly. Just quickly cleaning up, and then we can get on to the rest of the build, which is essentially just the keycaps and then our typing pad is very exciting indeed. It's been a while since I've had a keyboard typing pad. It's a good opportunity to see how rusty I am. All right, so let's see. I think I'm gonna go white. I think I'm gonna inverse the um. Actually, do I want to go white? Hmm. I think I'll go all black for this one. Instead of the inverted colors. Yeah, I think all black. Get this keyboard off. Let me very quickly look up the layout here and make sure I'm following the correct layout that they prefer. Or, sorry, the recommended layout. Product image. Okay. Um, cool. Pretty much what I thought, but just had to make sure since it is a standard 65. But since it had 7U, I don't know if the bottom row would be a little bit screwy at all. I don't gotta do such a good job with everything they do, man. Their keycaps, their keyboards. Um, I haven't tried any other accessories they may have. I believe they have switches now too. 
but it's just excellent every time. Delete home page up page default. What is delete in this kit? <laughs> huh. I guess that'll be this. But I need a four uh row for this. Folder. And then I'm looking for home, which would be top of the page, which is this symbol here. Is this a row four yet? Yeah, is need a better home key? Do they not have another home key that's tough? They don't. Okay, so instead of that, we'll do insert delete. I guess I'll use insert. We can do insert and delete because I know that delete has a through a row three option. Yeah, that's those. So then delete can go here. Right, and then we do insert, which I believe is just this I symbol. And then page up and page down is very easy keys to find up and down okay so we have insert delete page up page down dang these switches sound really nice this typing test is gonna sound really nice I can already tell This is a very like this color just reminds me of Halo. And that'll definitely be good for the clan because I'm a huge Halo guy. Um okay, what's alt? I don't know what alt is in this setup of keys. Um assuming that's control. So I guess this would be alt in here. Yeah, because this is control, this is single key code, and then the other one would have to be all. Yeah, okay, got it. Got it, so that's our whole bottom row done. And the rest of this is easy enough. We have support for... No, they don't have row four cap. Interesting. So they're not very friendly to those of us who like to have control for caps lock keys. It's very interesting. I would expect them to be pretty, uh, I don't know what the word is, tolerant of other layouts. They've done pretty much so well with everything else. Kind of just an expected thing. Maybe they have add-ons for that, I'm not sure. I haven't taken a look at their Series 1 keycap system for myself. But the client really does like them. It's a second It's a second set. First set was on his uh, Monokai TGI Tomo. And now we have it on another Monokai project here, the Hero. This is part of the Model Kai and Friends set, so I'm not too sure who else helped 
in the process of this keyboard being created, but yeah, that's the thing. really like the simplicity of this thing. It's very clean, it's very elegant, it's very, I don't know, very my style, I'd say. You can definitely tell that Monokai tailored their keycap set to their keyboards. Um, with the way that they had um, split right shift on the top tray um and the default seven u spacebar with 6.25 and secondary tray typically it'd be the opposite typically you six six point two five u on top but obviously they know who's going to be using these and on what boards so for the most part anyways obviously people may choose to put this on whatever keyboard they want but especially works on the model guy stuff yeah. That rounds out our Monokai Hero keyboard build. Now just time for the glam shots and then we get onto our keyboard typing cup. We call it a night. Right just under the two hour mark, everybody. Which includes cleanup, you know? We, we did a good job for the time efficiency tonight. I believe my quickest keyboard build was a minute, sorry, two hours and four minutes on, I believe that was a Freebird 60. I don't recall off the top of my head, but it was something around that. Regardless. Okay. Yeah. Final Kai, Hero, Olive Green, Silver Bottom, built with the Mono Kai Series 1 keycaps, white on black, Silver Bottom on the Olive Top, you see the Mono Kai logo, built with Novel Keys Creams and TX Stabilizers, 1.6 millimeter. These are uh, Novel Keys Creams launch editions, I'm not sure if you guys can see the faint blue in there, but with those glam shots let's disable everything that we need to and let's get framing i should also probably bump down the iso a little bit one second sorry about that It's not going to let me manually do that right now just because of the camera settings I have set. I forgot about that one. This, my overhead camera lets me do that stuff manually, but it's fine. Now let's get to actually playing with this thing. Okay. 
let's go to Vita real quick. Ooh. Take us out of this one already. Where's my wrist rack? Where I put my Oh, does VIA not detect this keyboard? Do I need to update my VIA or maybe use VIA on the web? Let's go use VIA on the web. Okay, let's pull up VIA on the web real quick. I know use via dot app authorize connect. There we go. Um, we're gonna change this to there. Oh, let me show you guys what it's doing real quick. Let's get a main monitor. Hey, don't do window pane better. Uh, let's do there. We go. That is the wrong via. Okay. Let's just go to key tester, test matrix. Make sure all of our keys are fully functional. doesn't know that this is um seven you set up it's not allowed for 6.25 because this is i might be using the same firmware as the um the solder version of this keyboard but this is not the solder version of this keyboard if i go over here and go to layouts bottom row there we go seven you cool left win alt left control perfect and then we have insert and then for this we have delete save layout there we go that's it now let's get the music down let's get my noise gate off and let's pull up monkey type So I do that, and I do this, and then I move this over here, full screen this, and then actually for now, I'll just leave it like this, so that way this comes out looking better. Okay. Let's put you guys in. Typing test. That's it. That's all it is. Let's put myself back over there. And yeah. Wow. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys like the keyboard. Hope you guys enjoyed the time spent. 
and I hope for anybody watching over on the YouTube side, you've enjoyed yourself as well. Thank you so much for watching. I don't really have anything left to add. This has been quite the night. It's been a pleasure, really, and I love the sound of this keyboard. I think that the foam did exactly what I wanted it to with the uh, cream sound signature. It still had that clack that you and you could tell, especially on the um, the second and home row. So QWERTY row and then home row. You can definitely tell it still has that clack, but there's a base to it now with the reverberation. And that, and that has to do, I would assume, with the polycarbonate plate plus the foam. There's not a lot of space for that stuff to bounce off of, so you don't really get that high-pitched um, frequency just replicated over and over. But yeah, that's everything, guys. I appreciate all of you so much for watching. Um, please do consider following if you haven't already. Subscribe like comment whatever you got to do on the youtube side of things i appreciate it so much and we have so much more to go especially for 2023 um i already i have like four other keyboards in my closet i have to assemble for the same client uh two qk65s another one of these and a skog reboot so hopefully you guys are excited for that i am for sure and i hope you guys have a good night peace